everybody, it's Cable here from Zurb. In today's lesson, we're gonna be doing part two of our seven part Flexbox tutorial series. During this Flexbox tutorial, you will be learning all about Flexbox, going from enthusiast to expert. This will take your web development game up several notches. Flexbox is amazing. So, in today's lesson, what we're gonna be covering is the core relationship in Flexbox, the flex parent and child relationship. You understand flex parents and children, you're 50% of the way there to understanding Flexbox. We'll then be using that relationship to manipulate horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, and talking about how you can orient your flex parents horizontally or vertically. Let's jump in. All right, so let's talk about flex parents and children. The parent-child relationship is the core relationship in Flexbox. In order to lay things out in a Flexbox manner, you have to set up your flex parent and your flex child. Uh, well, every child div, div inside of that parent will, will start to have Flexbox properties. So I've set up a simple code pen here to show this out, and I haven't added the Flex properties yet, but I've set a div for the parent and a set of children underneath it, and added some demo styling that you can see here, so it's easy to see what's going on. So our parent has a little padding, it's showing in red, our children are blue, they have a little bit of size uh, just to make it easy. All right. Right now we're laying out in a standard block manner. Our children are block elements, they're laying things down. To turn this into a flex-based layout, all we need to do is take that parent and declare that it's a flex parent. We do that by adding display flex. As soon as we do that, you can see that all of a sudden our layout shifts. Our children are here, they're no longer block level elements, they are now flex box child elements. They're laying out one by one by one on the left side of this. A flex parent is essentially a vector. You can think of it as a, as a directional row or column. It's an arrow. Uh, we're gonna start with it as a row. So here we can see that we've got a, a big long row here. Think of it as a vector pointing this way. And we're gonna manipulate where these children are along that vector. You can actually reverse it, change the, the orientation so the vector goes up or down, all that sort of stuff. We'll touch on that in a sec. But first, let's look at these children. We have a number of ways to align the children. So right now they look like essentially how you would with inline block elements. They're just over here on the left um, laying out. We can start manipulating their positioning horizontally along the axis of this vector uh, with a property called justify content. So if we add a justify content property and we say, let's say justify content center, we can see that all of a sudden, all of our child elements are centered within this. We didn't have to touch margin or anything like that. We didn't have to float them. They're just centered. And notice that I put this on the parent. The parent has complete control over the children. If only that were true in real life. My kids would behave so much better. But uh, we can center them using justify content center. We can put them at the beginning of the vector. So that was the default. That looks like this, flex start. It's not left, it's not right, it's flex start because it's the beginning of our vector. If we change the orientation of our vector, that'll change how it lays out. We can put them all at the end, flex end, and we can space them out. So say we wanted to have a nice layout where things are always aligned on the left, on the right, um, and centered with space uh, between them, we can add justify content space between. And we can see that things laid out one by one by one. What's really cool about this is unlike in a float based layout, they will automatically adjust to however many children there are. So if we add a few more children, put those in there, you can see that they're automatically adjusting with the appropriate amount of space to keep things laid out evenly. We can also lay things out uh, so that instead of it being flush to the outside space between, we can have space around our elements and we can see that we get them nicely equidistant spaced with space around um, looks like we've centered the whole set of things. So this is super cool. This is, I'm calling it horizontal alignment, but really this is alignment along the axis of the flex vector. And we'll go a little bit more into alignment, but just to show you real quick how that plays out, if I were to change the flex direction to a column, suddenly my children are laid out in a different direction. Um, and just to, to sort of show how that, uh, plays out even more, let's do height um, 100 VH. And we, can, we had our space around, it was horizontally, now it's vertically. So it's really along the direction of that vector. 
Another thing we can do is align things vertically or rather crossways from the vector. So if we have in this case our children, let's make one of our children really tall. My uh, younger son, or my older son, sorry, is super tall. And you know, he's always he's taller than the kids around him. So we can see that by default in Flexbox, when we have this really tall child, all of the children are gonna match heights. That's super cool. That's something that uh, previously you needed to do with JavaScript if you wanted things to match. Um, you would essentially use, uh, we ship a whole plugin with Foundation, the Equalizer plugin, uh, to do exactly this and you get it out of the box with Flexbox. But that can also be manipulated. The, the way that we manipulate vertical alignment is with the align items property. So if I want to align items, say I want to align them all to the begin, the top. Let's see if this. So if I do align items flex start, once again, this is relative to the orientation of your vector. So it's not going to be top and bottom. It's going to be flex start, flex end. You can see that I'm no longer stretching everything out. I'm aligning everything to be aligned at the top. I can do flex end and it aligns at the bottom. Super cool. The default here is align items stretch. And so that's what's going on here. These things are being stretched to fill that space. You can also align them in a centered manner. So no more mucking around with vertical align to get things centered or things like that. It's as simple as align item center. And you can do align items baseline, which is going to do it based on the baseline of the text, which isn't as interesting in this example, but can also be useful. One other thing that is worth noting here is that you can actually manipulate this particular property not only at the parent level, but you can do it per child as well. So say I want all these things to be centered, but I have one child that I really want to be uh, at the bottom. So we're gonna give that thing a class. I'm gonna call this my flex child bottom. And for the flex child bottom, I want to align it at the bottom. So I can do on that child align self and give it a property. In this case, it would be flex end for the bottom. And you can see that that child in particular has now set its own vertical alignment. So this really gives you incredibly fine grained control over how things lay out. Uh, let's go back really quick and talk about vertical orientation now. So all of these things that we've been doing, we mentioned briefly, we can change the orientation of our vector. So if we take our parent and we say, okay, you know what, you've been doing great, you've been laying out uh, horizontally, but I want you to be vertically. So all I did, all I do to do that is change the flex direction. I'm gonna change my flex direction to be a column, and suddenly everything is laying out vertically. Uh, and you can see that the align items and the flex uh, and the justify content have now switched their behavior. So my align items is now along the axis of the column going down and my flex direct, or sorry, my, uh, I mixed that up. My justify content is now along the axis of the vector going down. My align items is off the axis, so these things are centered. My one bottom child is now my right child because it's to the um, left of the orientation of the vector. So the vector goes this way, the flex end is this way if I change that to around instead to be flex begin or flex start, we can see it goes on the other side. So we can manipulate things in either the X or the Y direction simply by influencing the orientation of our parent and the pieces within it. One final element I wanna go through real quick here, I'm gonna go back to the uh, sort of uh, vertical approach that we had before, is that we can actually nest these things down as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna make my problem child here, my tall child. My tall child happens to be my problem child, so that's probably where that's coming from. And we uh, get rid of the breaks and just make each of these their individual, uh, into individual elements. So we'll call these divs, and let's actually make them a child themselves. We take that child and make it a parent at the same time. And children can be parents in this, so you can nest these things the whole way down. And we're gonna set up a slew of these. And let's do a couple of things to, to look at what's going on. So first, let's uh, orient that flex child that's also a parent in a different way. So we're going to orient it uh, as a column. So we'll do flex direction column. 
And let's uh, give it a slightly different background so we can see things uh, independently. So let's give that background color, let's call that one purple. So we can see now that this element that is our, our flex parent uh, is laying things out and it has children itself going through it. So things are, are going on here and we can keep manipulating parents and children and parents and children to really get deep, deep control over this layout. And each one of these is uh, independent. So for example, in this one, say we wanted to center, let's give it a little more height just so we uh, can see this better, uh, 90VH. Say we wanted to center the children within that, uh, we can center their children uh, using justify content. Um, and we can keep manipulating things, nesting down, nesting down. Uh, let's, for some reason, we're wide on here. Ah, because the flex parent has width 80, so let's get rid of that. So uh, width auto on our child. And just keep going down as we go, such that you can really build complex layouts and components simply by keeping track of this flex parent, flex child uh, relationship, and taking it all the way through. All right, that's it for today's lesson. You've learned all about flex parents and children, how to arrange things horizontally and vertically using align items and justify content, and you've even dug into nesting a little bit. You're just about ready to build some awesome Flexbox-based layout. Next week, we're gonna continue giving the tools you need by diving into some more flex properties. We'll talk about sizing, ordering, and wrapping. By the end, you're gonna be a Flexbox expert. So subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss it out. The Yeti's working on getting more flexible, so for every subscriber, he's gonna do 10 toe touches. I can barely even touch my toes. That's it for now, I'll see you next week. This is K-Ball, signing out.